Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor. Who's Doss Gregor? I know, seven months and you've already forgotten me. I'm sorry. Life gets in the way, guys. Sometimes I'm just super busy and I just can't keep up with things. And in fact, it's been so long, I really hope my audio is okay. Uh, last couple tests I've made, I don't understand it. I don't know if my headset, what it is, but there seems to be like a crackle that appears and then it disappears and I do a test it's like oh that's perfect no problem I do another test the crackle 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 I'm not sure what it is but that being said let's get into today's discussion I recently watched a video from a fellow youtuber and he was talking about Microsoft putting XFAT into the kernel I'll be honest guys I don't know how I feel about that it's not something that I think is a good thing unless Microsoft was willing to open source the XFAT uh, driver totally. Just releasing specs is not good enough for me. To me it is a taint on the Linux kernel and that bothers me. Microsoft over the last 20 years has done very little to really help other than in my opinion practically destroy everything that they touch one of the main reasons why I refuse to use Microsoft products in my home granted my work computer must be Microsoft <sighs> you know the evils that support the good I have to support it so that I can work on Linux and enjoy Linux. And speaking of Linux, the rumors are not true. I am not in BSD. I am using Gen 2 still. I will probably always use Gen 2 until it just becomes too difficult or cumbersome to use. I will admit, my children use Ubuntu. I like them having Ubuntu because it's very easy to maintain. I don't have to compile every piece of software that's, that has to be on their machine. It works out of the box. I can install it in five minutes. Oh, what a dream that would be. Installing Gen 2 in five minutes. <laughs> Who are we kidding? Oh, well. Anyway, my talk about Microsoft and putting XFAT in the kernel. My personal opinion is it has no place whatsoever in the Linux kernel unless they open source it completely, relinquish all licensing and patent requirements whatsoever, completely provide the code out there. If they're not willing to open source it, then I say it has no business whatsoever being in the Linux kernel. You can create it as a module, allow us, as it is in a way now, when we have to put in XFAT support into the system to build that module separately and insert it. That's the way it should and ought to be unless they're going to open source it. Uh, I source, or I'm, I'm referencing, of course, this article here. And I know this is an older article from August 28th, but it was just recently brought to my attention. And I've been very busy, so I haven't had a chance to really look at things. But I just looked at this little article here, and I was, of course, reading what some of the comments down below have said about it. You can see from the URL, I just did a simple Google search really on uh, Microsoft XFAT you know, Linux kernel, etc., and found this. Uh, I don't think it's the same one that I saw somebody else speaking about on the internet, but it is pretty much saying the same thing that they mentioned. Uh, I also kind of find it interesting, nothing against John Grossman, I know nothing of this man, but his title there, Microsoft Distinguished Engineer and Linux Foundation Board Member, 
that to me seems like a complete conflict of interest. That to me seems like an oxymoron of, of title. You cannot be a distinguished Microsoft engineer, in my opinion, and also be a Linux Foundation supporter. Uh, it's like vinegar and water. They don't mix. They don't work well. They don't belong together. As one commenter mentioned below, instead of Linux becoming more Microsoft-like, Microsoft needs to become more Linux-like instead. It is the open source philosophy of the world that we have here that has supported and built what Linus Torvalds has created. It is the, the, the fact that we have people everywhere that give of themselves to this free open source community and build and make this thing such a better tool than it ever could be. That's what makes Linux so great. Everybody's individual contribution to this. To see large companies get into Linux makes me upset. I was so upset when, for instance, Novell purchased SUSE. SUSE was a version of Linux that I used for many years and was very happy with. And I hate it every time that I see corporations get involved and buy out because it means they're going to do things that disrupt how the internals of this should have always been. I'm not sure what really can be done about it. I am appalled to think that those responsible for the Linux kernel would allow something like this to occur. But who am I? One guy on the interwebs who likes Gen 2 a lot who means nothing to Microsoft or ultimately to the Linux Foundation but when you start letting companies like Microsoft put their junk where it doesn't belong in my opinion you're going to open the door for just other things to destroy the integrity of what Linux has become now there may be a lot of comments and there might not be any I don't know I'm hearing so many rumblings about how the Linux upper echelon has become so dysfunctional and screwed up that there are so many issues within the Linux community that are just so dis disjointed and, and not connected any longer who's to blame I don't know I hated to see Linus take a step down I don't know where he stands in all of this. He and I don't talk. I don't know him. He doesn't know me. I can tell you, though, I have great respect for the man for the things that he did in building the Linux kernel and what this operating system has become over the years. It's definitely been a successful alternative for me and my family in regards to an operating system that I can use and feel comfortable with and not have anything of Microsoft bogging it down and destroying it. Yeah, that is what it is. On the other hand, I want to talk about something else, completely off the subject, part two. <laughs> and that has to do with, as users of Linux, we should support Linux. Now, in the past, I have purchased swag from SUSE. I purchased swag from Slackware and Gen2. I've got the hats, I've got the t-shirts, I've got the pins, lapels. I even used to purchase back in the day SUSE just to support them before they were purchased by Novell. And so we should always try to give back, whether that's monetarily with what we can afford or also volunteering to assist with projects and different things that are out there. But also, if we want to see more support out there, we need to support those hardware manufacturers that are building and giving us products that are Linux oriented and work perfectly well with Linux. Now, my next statement is not endorsed, nor paid for, nor asked for. But over the last six so months, I have purchased at least two 
System76 systems, a laptop and one of their Meerkat uh, nooks. Now I'll say I have been very impressed with them. I bought the laptop for my wife. I have my son using the Meerkat to try that out. And they have been great little computers. They have worked very well. I'm very impressed so far that they are there. They have Linux on them out of the box. They have been stable. They have been great and wonderful to use. Now sometimes you don't know how to base a company until there's a problem. Two months after having my wife using the laptop that I got her, which was the Darter Pro that just was released actually back in February, her LCD screen started to act up. She opened up her computer to find a line going right down the LCD, which was very noticeably a defect within the screen. I reached out to System76 and talked to them, and they were very helpful. They had me go ahead and box everything up, send it to them, explain to me the whole process. I went ahead and mailed it to them. They took care of the issue. I even, while they had it, asked them what it would cost to upgrade the RAM, put another 8 gigs in there. I just took it with the original 8 gigs that it had. And for a very reasonable price, they went ahead and upgraded it for me, checked it all out, verified it, and returned it all within in a very acceptable time frame. They kept me informed of every step of the process and they took care of me. That's important for all companies. Anybody can sell a product, but a company who stands by their product, makes sure that it's taken care of, fixes it, repairs it, and gets it back to you, and then checks up to make sure things are right all the way through, that's what I call good customer service. And because of that, I've been very happy to give System76 more of my business and plan to continue to give them my business in the future. Now, don't thumbs down me because you don't like System76 or maybe you had a bad uh, experience with them. Everybody's experience is different. But I do want to say we should support those companies out there who give support to my... Oh my goodness, did I just have a... What was that? To Linux. <laughs> Absolutely. To, to. It makes me very happy to find companies that are supporting Linux, building hardware that works 100% or close to 100%. You almost can't get that nowadays. I mean, you used to have to buy your computer parts with Linux in mind just to make sure that they'd work. Uh, luckily, nowadays, most everything does work, and that's a great thing. And it's nice to know that there are companies like System76 that are out there building this hardware for us as Linux users. Now, some people might say, oh, but System76, they cost way too much. Look at their specs. The specs on their systems are awesome. The specs that they are giving you are great. If you were to compare the actual specs of the computer that they are selling you to similar hardware on the market, you're going to pay more, most likely, for that hardware and you're going to get Microsoft ugh, stuck on there instead that you can have to just wipe anyway and replace it with a decent OS like Linux. So it would be much better just to give your money to a company like System76 instead of doing the other. And, and like I said, I have looked at those prices. I have looked at what the other manufacturers have. For the hardware specs that they're providing to you as a consumer, these are good specs. And believe me, I think it's well worth it. Now, commercial over. I just want to put my two cents because I've been meaning to do that video for a while now. Yeah. Like I said, I was impressed with how they operated, how they took care of us. They didn't know I'm Doss Gregor of the YouTube channel. All 2.7 thousand 
subscribers. It's not that many. That's a drop in the bucket compared to all these other guys on YouTube that have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. My channel's not low. I don't reach millions of people. I didn't tell them, hey, I've got this YouTube channel. I want to look at your product and them say, oh, well, let's, let's take care of this guy because he could give us a good review. No, they didn't know me. They don't know anything about, they probably don't even know my channel. They probably don't watch me. So, like I said, they didn't reach out to me. They didn't endorse this. They didn't ask me. But I wanted to share that with those few people who do watch my videos. How happy I am with the way that they operate their hardware so far. And like I said, I'll probably buy some more laptops from them. Yeah. I'm not so sure I can... I, uh, the Thelio, boy, that's, that's, that's their desktop. I think I'm saying that right. It's got some good specs, but it's too much for me. But I like how their laptops are. Now, I did ask them if they would ever think about putting in a touch screen, and, and they haven't gone that route. And that's probably one of the things that I would miss, because I've been happy with my touch screen. And it works really well within Gen 2, and actually it's worked with pretty much every distribution I've ever tried it in the last five or so years, uh, since touch screens become more and more um, prevalent in a lot of different laptops. But it's been good. So how have you guys been? Ah, seven months. I still can't believe it's been seven months since I did a video. Now I'm rambling. <laughs> so let's see if I can remember my outro. If it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you have a good one. Thanks for watching, guys.